And we've been doing this survey since 2017. Um, a lot of the things in this survey are not new, uh, although some things do uh, improve in terms of uh, what the customers are telling us they want more of or less of, um, but a lot of the issues remain to be the same. And I find myself, and I've said this at the uh, conference that I was lucky enough to present in, um, ask, ask a lot of questions over the last few years as to why. Why, why are these things uh, remaining to be issues or why are these, uh, these uh, processes not improving? And I often get the response because that's just the way it is. I used at the time a, a, a thing that, I don't know, resonates with me, it did. It's, I can't even remember where, where I heard it, but it was the story of the, of the five monkeys. So it was, it was a, a gentleman who decided to run an experiment. He, I don't know if anybody's familiar with this in the room. No? So the experiment took the five monkeys, put them in a cage, and put a, a, step, a, step, a ladder in the cage, and at the top of the ladder there was uh, a bunch of bananas. So sure enough, as soon as the cage was closed, the monkeys started to climb up uh, the, the ladder, and then the minute they went for the ladder, they were sprayed with cold water. Eventually, through social norming, any time that a monkey went for that ladder, they were sprayed with water. Eventually, that experimenter took one monkey out and left the other four in, and a new monkey made a dash for the, the ladder and was attacked by the other monkeys. That process continued till all the monkeys were replaced with five completely new monkeys that had no idea why no, no one would climb that ladder, but they didn't because that's the way it is. And so I use that in, in, in that presentation to sort of challenge ourselves to think about why is it the way it is and can we do it differently? I won't hit every, set, every stat that we, uh, we covered off, but I think the first one is pretty important. Despite all the rhetoric, despite all the push from multiple governments around the world to say how bad we truly are, our customers don't feel that way. So, and that's the most important thing. So in this survey, we had 82% of our customers are relatively satisfied or, or satisfied with, their, with the way that their, uh, pr their journey went. And that's important because we have a tendency to focus on the small percentage of when we get it wrong versus the majority of the time when we actually get it right. So EU 261 and the, the APPR in Canada and the US legislation for passenger rights is in some cases just a distraction. The survey itself focuses on touch points. So what we try to do is look at from the beginning to the end of the journey. So booking to curb, basically. And in that, we measure the satisfaction rate on all these different touch points. And it's probably of no surprise to anyone that on the ones that are primarily in the airline control, with the exception of one, uh, and ones that have gotten the greatest amount of investment uh, perform relatively well. So in this case, you're looking at booking, travel options, the advancement of the net and, uh, and uh, dot com, uh, airport arrival process, check-in, which has been uh, dramatically changed over the course of the last 20 years, the boarding process, uh, onboard itself, um, transfer, border control, and or rather uh, final destinations all, all fine. Where we see the biggest areas of opportunity and they remain to be security. I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Border control and immigration, I'll also talk about that in a second. Um, bag drop, baggage collection, and transfer. Those are the areas of frustration. Why? Because it was evident more than ever before in any of our uh, survey results that our customers are speaking in terms of they want two things. They want convenience and they want speed. Probably no shock to any of us because in our daily lives, that's what we are expecting primarily as well. We have no patience for, for waiting for anything anymore. The advent of e-commerce and all the others, uh, Wi-Fi, I mean, I'm still old enough to remember uh, no computers, let alone uh, dial-up. Uh, I don't think anybody nowadays could actually withstand trying to use something like that, even smartphones. Everything is at our fingertips, so convenience and speed 
being the primary drivers of our, of our customers should be really of no, uh, no surprise to anyone. So then we broke things down into sort of the planning process or planning a trip, the airport oper and the airport operations. And I'll have a slide at the end on, on baggage itself. So in terms of planning, the number one process is booking. Don't really seem to be very many concerns in terms of how, how that's managed, except for there are always areas of opportunity. So access to information is something that our customers have, have want, they want it in one spot. And I think, and if, again, thinking about it in your own terms or when you're planning your own trip, does that make sense? And I think, you know, when you think about it, probably it does. Whether that's booking your flight, booking your destination, booking your car and all those things. We're getting better at it, but there is, a, there is clearly area to uh, continue to improve upon. And um, what's in the price? Uh, that's become more and more evident as we've un unbundled, uh, which was something that the low cost carriers had perfected and then uh, mainline, car mainline carriers have done the same thing. So that's actually lack of transparency in a way has caused, has asked our cu customers are asking us to try and improve upon that area. Payment is an interesting one because intuitively you'd think, well, no, we're pretty satisfied three and four are okay with the payment process. 73% prefer using credit card and debit card, but that depends on where you are. And if you look at the slide, it's clear that depending on what region of the world you're in, your per preferred payment method differs. And we're not set up like that. So we need to find a way to, uh, to be able to uh, address our customers' needs in terms of payment. What they're asking for, uh, they want uh, payment to be easier. In some cases, that's not the case. They want it tailored, which would be indicative here. They also want the possibility of split payments, which is something that uh, very few carriers can, can enable today. And it makes sense being able to perhaps pay for your ancillary a different way than you paid for your ticket or use points and use money, use points and use debit card. So there is something uh, to be, and again, same thing on the payment side, fee transparency is very important for our customers. I found this interesting because I wouldn't have answered that qu this question the same way. Uh, when uh, we asked the, our customers what was the most important reason for choosing a departure location, I automatically would have said price, but actually price is second. And location, proximity to an airport is number one reason for choosing departure airport. So um, great if you live next to an airport. Clearly that has a lot of variation if you're living in certain parts of the world where there are uh, airports rather close in proximity, um, but in general, uh, proximity is number one reason, ticket price, and then the airline availability comes in third in terms of uh, uh, selection of departure airport. Talking a little bit about immigration, um, Customers uh, are discouraged to travel through because of the complexity of immigration processes, primarily around visas or the, or the uh, prolif prolifer proliferation of them. So more and more requirements of visa uh, is making it, has become a deterrent to travel. I don't think that would probably be a big surprise to anyone. Um, and in the next slide, you can clearly see what they're expecting. So, um, 87% of our customers are willing to give whatever it takes to immigration to help improve the process. What we see today is more and more information being given to them, but the process is not really improving that much. Those that have been around long enough to travel are used to filling out paper forms on board aircraft. Uh, that now is done on, on a computer, which eventually gives you the same piece of paper to use to go through process, depending on the location you're in. So in many cases, uh, we haven't really uh, improved anything. All we've done is digitized uh, what would have been a manual process in, in, a, in the past. Also in terms of visa requirements, everybody or the majority want them online. And it's a lot easier that way. And that's a less, lot less complex. We can argue all day whether or not it's required to have so many visas, but if governments are gonna go in this direction, then they need to go in the direction of providing e-visas for our customers' use. Speed. This is always a, a really interesting slide to me simply because it's not the way we're set up today. We were, at one point we were, but today that's not the case. Everything in an airport is built on dwell time. 
shopping, restaurants. Nothing really, when you think about it, is built to actually deliver upon the speed that our uh, customers are, are, uh, are looking for. 55% uh, of our passengers would like to be notified of trash tracked off. They, don't want, they want to skip the queues. No surprise, who doesn't want to skip a queue? Uh, two out of three believe that security checkpoint queue is, needs to improve. Yeah. 99% of the customers that travel in aviation in our industry are safe, have no malintent, and will never cause a problem. Yet we treat everybody the same. There are no risk-based principles in security, zero. And until security can grasp risk-based principles, we are forced to deal with this situation. We're seeing advancements in technology, which allows you to finally keep your belt on and maybe leave your laptop in your bag, but that depends on the location. Sometimes it depends on what part of the airport you're in. This needs to, needs to be addressed. And 91% said that they would be interested in trusted travel programs. We've seen those work. The US is the best example. They haven't really added any infrastructure. They haven't really added much in terms of space for the use of TSA, but through the use of trusted travel programs, they've been able to handle more people, more throughput. And that's what we need uh, more of. Unfortunately, there's not very many other examples uh, globally in terms of this, but it's something that we continue to advocate for. There's a growing desire to do stuff out of the airport, which is a good thing because as we've seen, and you probably presented earlier this morning, the growth of the industry, we're back to you know, next year exceeding 2019 levels, and we'll be back on that same trajectory of growing again, six to 10% potentially over the course of the next 10, 20 years. We're not gonna build airports. There's very few places in the world that can build airports in a fast period of time, China being one of them, but we haven't seen any examples and there's very few greenfield spaces uh, outside of, uh, of Saudi uh, and uh, China and in, in Asia Pacific. So we're gonna have to find ways to use the facility even better. This is a, an area that it's good to see our customers going in because the industry is going to be forced to do so. So immigration processes, sharing of information, check-in, uh, but a larger degree of check-in, like check-in meaning you, when you go out to the airport, you only go through security. You don't ever have to see anyone again. And baggage, handling baggage off, off airport has been a dream for about two decades now. Uh, it's time that we really dig in in terms of processes and regulations required for that to be able to take place. Biometrics, Jan will give, give a much better uh, explanation of where we're going in this regard, but it's very encouraging encouraging to see that not only this is the promised land, this is the new way of handling passengers in the future. This is in an airport. Almost every airport around the world is doing something around the lines of biometrics. Um, almost 50% of customers in the survey use some sort of biometric when you went through the airport. 75% of the passengers want to use it so they don't have to use their boarding card and passport anymore. I think that's logical and 85% score positive in terms of satisfaction when it's used. So it, it is the promised land in terms of uh, passenger processing. It will speed things up. It will make things uh, more efficient. And uh, it is, uh, it, 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 what we lack today is standardization and harmonization to make it interoperable from one location to the other. We will get there and we can't stifle innovation. So while some people are, are doing certain things at certain airports, eventually we will get to a place where uh, it'll be something that's interoperable and harmonized, hopefully within the, uh, my lifetime. With anything, um, data protection is important. So as we do this and as we scale this up, you know, customers have made it very clear that they wanna ensure that we know how to handle our security by design, I guess, for lack of a better term, aware of data breaches, aware of uh, how data is being shared, uh, knowing how long data will be stored, and uh, knowing how it will be handled in terms of deletion. Uh, normal expectations, I think, that uh, the fine print, so to speak, that many of us scroll through and never read, uh, but in terms of our design and the way this will move and go forward in terms of interoperability and harmonize, it has to be built this way. So the last, the last slide, probably the, the one, uh, why I left it last on, 
uh, I'm not really sure why it was last, but it is certainly within our control and it is an area that's been uh, very frustrating for our customers. It was doing okay for leading up to 2019. So our stats were illustrative of the fact that we were losing less, we were handling better, we were doing okay. Coming out of COVID-19, the wheels fell off and we had a really, really bad year. Why was that? There was a multitude of issues, staffing perhaps being one of them and off schedule operations being the second one, both of which in some ways go hand in hand. And as a result, we really lost our hand, the handle on baggage. Uh, we saw a lot of articles, we saw lots of talk about Apple Air tags and all these things because performance was just indicative of what we were 10 years ago. This year, fortunately, we are better, but we can't, uh, we can't remain where we are. Um, there's a lot of reasons why, um, but like I said earlier, we want to focus on a few key areas in terms of being able to build standards and allow for uh, uh, better handling of our baggage. One is to look at home pickup and delivery in terms of what regulatory requirements are needed to allow for that to be something that airlines can be able to invest in and do more of moving forward. Work on the connection process, which today remains to be relatively um, unharmonious, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, we need uh, better uh, tools, uh, business intelligence tools, in terms of managing the baggage process throughout, uh, throughout the passenger journey, including being able to communicate disruption to cu customers in a much better way. And lastly, tracking. You know, you've probably heard maybe me or someone who predates me speaking about RFID. I think the dream of having a uh, standard in, ter in place in terms of what technology is used to track a bag uh, is, is perhaps passe, but tracking a bag is not. And resolution 753, which requires our members to track bags is still relevant. And so we will begin to more a journey of um, being able to measure compliance to 753 in terms of tracking, uh, regardless of the technology that an airline chooses to use to be able to, uh, to uh, enable that. So it, there's a lot of opportunity in the baggage side. It's, it's ultimately will improve consumer confidence, which will have an ancillary benefit for our airline members, uh, but also have side benefits, less bags in the airplane. So Tetris from our flight attendants uh, will be reduced, delays will be reduced, but it also has a, another benefit from a security perspective, because the less bags that go through a checkpoint, the easier and faster the processing. So there's a lot of reasons why this has to get more emphasis and will uh, starting next year and, uh, and years beyond that. So I think all in all, the, the results were, were positive. Uh, some clear areas to focus on. Uh, one of those, uh, as I'd mentioned, in terms of biometrics and one identity, Yon will give a uh, much better explanation to that and I'll turn things over to her. Thank you.